challenge of how best to manage wild deer in Queensland is a very complex and a very emotive issue. To get it right, we probably need to look at a lot of other systems around the world, taking sections out that suit our particular situation, and look at it all in a very common sense and a very practical and balanced way. As a kid, I grew up running around in this sort of country every chance I got. This is our dry, sclerophyll rainforest. It's up in the headwater country of the Brisbane and the Mary Valleys. It's full of vine and, and pine tree, your, your uh, hoop and your bunya pine, your high root, fig, uh, crow's ash trees, uh, black beans, everything's up here. Uh, this country is just full of native animals, every, every type of bird that you can imagine from your catbirds and bellbirds, whipbird, scrub turkeys, uh, the regent and the, and the satin bowbirds, everything's in here, it's just magnificent. But as I grew up, I saw hundreds of thousands of acres of this beautiful rainforest bulldozed down by our government, by our forestry departments and planted down to pine trees. The erosion that went with it was something that you had to see to believe and the change to our environment was just shocking in my view. The damage that was done in those years by our government would be far in excess by many thousands of times than the damage that all deer could do in this country if they stay here another thousand years. We've got to look at this in balance. <laughs> As a young bloke growing up in this country, I used to get around a lot of this, this uh, bush area with uh, different people mustering, clearing scrub. And uh, my granddad, who was an old man at that time, he, who came into this country in the early part of last century, he would tell me stories about how it used to be. And in an area like this, that was totally silted up, not a drop of water for miles in any direction, he told me a story about catching a 15 pound Brisbane cod out of this water hole. Now there's no water hole there, there's never been one in my memory and probably never will be again because of the silt of the erosion that came out of those forestry areas. Incredible changes to the local environment. Now contrary to reports we see in the newspapers and on the media about this so-called rampant herd of of 30,000 strong wild deer causing damage all across Queensland, the truth is actually quite different to that. Fact is, the majority of all our wild deer in Queensland are already under some form of management by landowners on their own properties. The majority of landowners are trying to do the right thing. There's only a few of them that are being irresponsible. So why hurt the good guys to catch a few people doing the wrong thing? Let's now look at the real nasties that are causing problems for landowners and the environment across Queensland. Let's look at the bad guys. Now this is one of the real bad guys. This stuff here. This is everyday lantana. Now when my granddad was just a lad, he told me he could ride anywhere through the bush here on his horse and you wouldn't have to duck your head. The scrubs were clean. You could ride straight in underneath them. Now, millions of acres of our state are covered with this terrible pest weed and very little is being done about it. From way down into New South Wales to the tip of the Cape, right inland and right across to the, to the coast, this stuff has basically taken over. Landowners can't do much at all. Fires will, will to keep some of it under control but it builds up such a body of, of um, fuel underneath it in dry times that the fires actually burn right in under our scrubs and burn out our dry scrubs. Uh, it causes huge environmental damage. The build-up of, of dry matter that goes down the creeks blocks up the water, causes huge, huge erosion. It is one of the worst ones out there. And like I said, nothing much is getting done. Now, bushfires, when they're done at the right time of the year under the right conditions, are not a bad thing at all. They're a good thing. Uh, you can clean your country up a lot and in our country a lot of the um, trees they only generate after there's a fire across them so it's not a bad thing however when you get in this situation where the fire can run up into the sides of the scrubs they'll get in the, it'll get in the lantana and it slowly burns its way through the scrubs we were lucky here the other night 
that this fire came up here after dark and it got into the edge of the scrub and it burned out. If it had been in the middle of the day, the whole lot would have gone. Around the pest issue, our team now is about probably five, seven hundred metres down into this gully and I've never been here in over 35 years of being on this property. I've never been in this gully before and I've always wanted to cut a track down to just have a look at the valley so we can take people in to have a look at the, the birds and the, uh, the native wildlife. It's absolutely choked up with lantana to the point where we're just beating ourselves into a frenzy trying to cut a way through it. This is the unseen cost of pest weeds. You know, you can see a pest animal on the, on the road or say you see a deer on the road and someone say, look, look at that nasty pest deer, he's causing damage. But if you actually get back and look at reality, you get into the bush and have a, a real good look, this is the nasty stuff. This stuff is doing infinitely more damage than the deer will ever do. At least we can manage the deer and we can put a price on them. This stuff is worthless and it is just insidiously creeping its way through all our scrubs and just destroying them. People should start to have a good look around them and put things into balance. Now there's a lot of freehold blocks around where the landowners have left the timber. They never logged it. And you look at the massive trees that are in some of these places. Now we call these sensitive areas, significant areas, ones that we'd never want touched. They're now full of lantana. They're burning down, they're getting wrecked. But under legislation at the moment, we're supposed to fence off these environmentally sensitive areas to keep the deer out. And what happens to the native wildlife? Because there's no water in here, nothing at all. We could fence this off, everything in here dies. If there's a bushfire, goes through it, all the native animals die. How crazy. Aren't we better to manage the deer on the properties next door in the open country? and regulate our herds of deer there and slowly draw the deer out of these places so they don't have an impact. To me, that's just working in balance. That's just being sensible, but I hope someone else in government can see that. It's not as if some of these areas haven't been utilized in the past. This old stump here is just so old. This would have been cut down by the early bullockies. There's Probably three different stumps, a big one there, another big one here, and that's taken out, now yeah, what, 100 years, at least more ago, 120 years ago, by the old timers. And this would have been pretty clear, this country, they probably would have brought their bullock wagons right up through the, the valley here, and cut it, and basically never left a mark, never put a road in, sustainably logging. Most landowners in the Brisbane and Mary Valleys have forestry country above their cattle holdings and most of it is absolutely choked with lantana like this. Now when it's carried by fruit, fruit eating birds and washed down the gullies by floods, what hope have they got? This is our world. This is our wild country.